It's first impressions time here at Run For Adventure again, and today we are taking a look at a crossover shoe from the Innovate brand, but this is no ordinary multi-terrain shoe because it's the first time Innovate have used graphene, the world's strongest material, in a rubber outsole and in midsole foam in a shoe designed to cross over to the hard stuff, tarmac, but also for getting out and hitting the trail. So all exciting stuff, but I've got to be honest, the thing I'm most excited about is it's an Innovate shoe with padding in the tongue. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Hope everybody is fit and well and training hard. Thanks for watching again, thanks for supporting the channel as always, but if this is the first time you've watched one of our videos, then welcome, it's great to have you along. But don't forget, if you enjoy it, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, but don't forget to hit that bell icon as well so you'll be notified when we upload any new exciting content. Right, so the shoe we are taking a look at today is Innovate its new Park Claw G280. Uh, this has actually gone on sale today, so hot off the press, and it is Innovate's attempt to make the ultimate road to trail shoe. So they've incorporated graphene into the outsole rubber, but also into that midsole foam. So to make it a comfortable, very grippy, super durable shoe that's gonna handle all types of terrain and all kinds of weather. If you're new to our first impressions videos, then what we normally try and do is give you a bit of information, a few facts and figures about the shoe, how it's been constructed, and then we're gonna get them on our feet and take them out for the first run. Obviously, we're gonna grab the cameras and we'll be bringing you guys along with us. However, we are doing it a little bit different this time around, but more to come on that later. Just before we get stuck into the specs, I just wanna say a big thanks to Lee from Innovate for sending down a pair of the new Park Claw G280s for us to test and review. It really is a huge help at the channel, so uh, really appreciate Lee, thanks for that. The first thing we gotta address is the price, and the new Park Claw comes in at a pretty expensive 160 pounds here in the UK. It's the third Innovate shoe that I've tested out that has graphic in the construction and they've all been pretty pricey so I think it's quite an expensive material to work with. When it comes down to the weight this shoe weighs in at 314 grams in a men's UK 10.5 and yep you heard me right I said 10.5 Normally I run in a nine and a half, sometimes I have to creep it up to a 10. I think this is the first time I've ever had to run in a 10.5 UK. So the new Park Claw definitely sizes up on the small side. As far as stack height, it runs with an eight mil offset on the heel. Starting with the upper first, and we've got this nice lightweight, breathable yet durable mesh upper construction. Some nice perforations around the midfoot and in the toe box, just for a bit of added airflow. Some uh, overlays from the heel, working around those lace eyelets for some extra durability. And we get the all important rubberized toe bumper, just to give us a bit of added protection from trail debris that's lurking out of sight. We've got a really good level of structure and padding around the ankle collar and in the heel cup. And happy to say the tongue is gusseted in the upper to give you that nice lockdown midfoot feel. And like I said at the beginning of the video, we actually get a good level of padding in this Innovate shoe in that tongue as well, keeping it nice and comfortable across the top of your foot, stopping those laces digging in when you pull the shoe down tight. Uh, we're seeing less and less of that in running shoes nowadays, especially ones from Innovate. Moving down to the midsole, and this is where it gets very interesting with this shoe because this is the first time Innovate have used graphene in that midsole foam when it comes to the Park Claw model. Now it's claimed that that graphene midsole returns 25% more energy, so it should feel pretty responsive at speed and very comfortable over distance, as well as being extremely durable. So you should feel full of energy for lots of miles. And then moving down to the all important outsole. And when you're designing a running shoe that's got a crossover to lots of different types of terrain, the outsole can be pretty tricky to get right. So Innovate have gone for graphene again using that G-grip outsole. So it should be pretty sticky and durable all at the same time. I've run in a few Innovate shoes with that G-grip outsole. Traction, grip, durability has always been good. 
Uh, we've also got a good depth of the lug, so four mil in depth, and there's lots of them, 98 to be exact, so plenty of grip on that outsole. So you should be able to handle most conditions and most weather types as well. We've also got a flex groove running down the center and one across the flex point under your forefoot, just so that midsole can adapt when you're running on uneven and technical ground. So there it is, the brand new multi-terrain shoe from Innovate. A bit of info about the specs and the features and how it's been constructed. And I almost forgot, it also comes with a pair of the brilliant boomerang footbeds from Innovate. Uh, this can only be a good thing. These make your shoes so, so comfortable. But that's enough of me waffling on. I'm sure a lot of you want to see us out there running, see some of the stunning trails and the roads that we get to run on here in Cornwall. So I'm going to go and get changed and we'll see you guys out on the route. Right, so the plan tonight, firstly, is to take it very steady. I ran the KVK on Sunday. I was a bit of a lightweight, I only did half of it, so seven and a half miles with 500 meters of elevation. Uh, I wouldn't say I raced it, I filmed it, I took the GoPro, but there was sections where I ran really hard, especially downhill, and boy, are my legs feeling it today. <laughs> Severe doms, so sore, so we're gonna go super, super steady. Uh, there will be a video coming to the channel very soon of the race. It was an incredible day, amazing weather. Run for Adventure and Say Sky sponsored the event, so it, it went perfectly. It was awesome to be back out racing on that stunning route. So keep your eyes open for that video coming very soon. As far as the run goes tonight, we've just reached our turning point. So we've got the Towers in front of me, but we've run road all the way up. Obviously, with the Park Claw being a road to trail shoe, this is gonna be a run of two halves. So we're gonna do half of it on the tarmac, on the hard stuff, and then we're gonna be hitting the trails for the second half of the run. So far, the shoe fits really good in a 10.5 UK. I'm so glad I went up that half a size. In a 10, it would have definitely have been too short. I think a lot of it is, is the toe box is very shallow, so it doesn't give you a lot of room. So creeping up a bit in length is making it feel just right on fit. Uh, as far as the lockdown, good round the midfoot, good in the heel. I would say the midsole maybe isn't as soft as I was expecting with it being a road to trail shoe. Uh, I think if you took those boomerang footbeds out of the shoe, it would actually feel quite firm. So perfect for when you're on the trails, but I was expecting just a little bit more cushion and a little bit more bounce from that midsole. Obviously it's early days. We're only, what, two miles into the run. So it might bed up a bit, it might soften up a bit, but we're downhill all the way back to the trail. So let's get going, but yeah, so far, so good. I think I definitely spoke a bit early when I said the midsole feels quite firm because we're just over three miles and already it feels like it's softened up a bit or it might be the boomerang footbed in the shoe. And I'm happy to say that my legs have softened up a bit as well. So the run is definitely doing me some good. After the KVK, I felt pretty sore, pretty stiff. So this is a great little shakeout run to get those legs moving again. And like I said earlier, this is a run of two halves, we're doing it a bit different. So I'm now heading to meet up with the TNT crew and we're gonna be heading out onto the trail. So we're going out to the Hale Towns tonight and we'll be giving the shoe a good test out there as well. So, so far, so good, especially with it getting a bit softer in that midsole. Feels pretty comfy on the road, but how's it gonna handle the trails in a minute? Let's go and meet the boys. So we've hooked up with the boys, they're all behind me, a right old ravel, look at them. What a bunch of prime specimens. A lot of us ran uh, KVK at the weekend. Richie, he wasn't a lightweight, he did the whole thing. Yeah. And he's still out here feeling as fresh as a daisy. It's a two lap course, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People need to be reminded. Yeah. I did one and I feel knackered. What's going on? But yeah, good to hook up with them, nice and steady. Everybody loosening those legs off. Uh, we're quite short on runners tonight. There's a few people down with injuries, unfortunately. Still good to be back out. I think they, uh, 
the sunglasses are maybe a little bit of overkill at the moment because it's, it's pretty gloomy out here but we're going to try and get another three and a half miles on the towers on the trails and see how this new park law handles the soft stuff oh we've got a bit of sun coming up beautiful Fun. This is good fun, John. <laughs> How cool is that? How lucky are we? Look. I mean, come on. How amazing is this? Stunning. Stunning place to run. Okay, whose clever idea was this after the KVK? Hey? Oh, feel the burn. Just what you need. Nice set of steep steps. And then a, and then a sand escalator or travelator, whatever you call it. Oh my God. I thought this run was supposed to be flushing the legs out, not making them work. We are all done. So we've come off the tower and so I'm back on a little bit of harder trail. A good, what, seven and a half miles in the shoes. It's great. Now the clocks have gone forward. Uh, we're getting the lighter evenings. It's what, half past seven? Still got my sunglasses on, although it is a little bit gloomy. But I've got to say, the shoe has got better the further I've run. So it performed really well out there on the towers. Obviously, really really dry but you saw there we did some nice soft sand running along the beach with the gorgeous sunset and it's very uneven on the tower and so the shoe felt nice and responsive and stable underfoot but yeah we're heading home so let's get back to the flat and we'll go into a bit more detail about how the park claw g280 performed out on its first run right let's get home i'm starving So that is the first run completed in the new park clause. It was great to break the run down into two sections. So a nice bit of continuous road running around three and a half miles, and then hooking up with TNT to get out on those beautiful flowing trails on the Hail Towers. And we even got a good bit of beach thrown in there for good measure with a stunning sunset. I've got to say it, I don't think I've ever had a running shoe change so much in feel over such a short distance. So we only ran seven and a half miles tonight in the shoe. And I would say when I started running on the road after about a mile and a half, I was feeling pretty underwhelmed by the performance. Uh, the midsole was feeling quite flat, quite firm. Uh, and I was expecting a bit more cushion and a bit more bounce from that graphene infused foam. I'd say if I had to score that midsole performance after a couple of miles, I probably would have only scored it five out of 10. However, I'm happy to say it didn't stay like that. So actually the more miles I put into the shoe, the better it felt. And on the last sort of half a mile of the run, I picked up a bit of firmer, flatter trail and a section of road. And it actually felt quite soft and quite cushioned underfoot. Once we picked up the trails, that midsole felt very connected and very stable. I wouldn't say the uh, Towns is the most technical trails that I run on, but you do have lots of sort of steep ups and downs, a lot of uneven ground, obviously, but you've also got the dreaded rabbit holes just lying in wait for you to sort of turn your ankle in and it coped with everything fine. It was super dry on tonight's run, so I'm looking forward to test that outsole out in some more muddy conditions, but it actually handled everything really well tonight. Even when we dropped down onto the beach and picked up those areas of really soft sand, it gave me plenty of traction. 
The uppers seemed to fit my foot really well, felt nice and breathable, so I got a nice lockdown around the midfoot and in the heel. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the widest Innovate shoe that I've ever run in. Obviously not an issue for me, I haven't got a wide foot, so again, it seemed to fit my foot shape really well, but if you have got a bit of width, then that could cause you an issue. Also, I mentioned at the beginning of the run, the toe box is quite shallow, so there's not a great deal of volume in there in general. So again, just something to be aware of. Uh, really good to be back in an Innovate shoe with a bit of padding in the tongue. So felt nice and comfortable across the top of my foot, but it's not over padded. So comfy, but you can still get a really good lockdown. Speaking of lockdown, the laces have obviously been designed to lock down and stay locked down, which is a great thing. I hate laces sort of coming loose or working loose while you're running, but they are quite hard to sort of work through those eyelets to get a good pull on those laces to lock you into the shoe. Uh, it did take me quite a lot of time to work them all the way up to the top when I started running in it. Not the end of the world, but you know, again, something I thought I'd just mention. But apart from that, by the end of the run, I was really enjoying the new park claw. And if it continues to sort of bed in and soften up like it did over that run, then I think it's going to be a really good shoe to run in. I suppose the only downside is the price. You know, at £160, it is an expensive shoe, especially when you think about our last first impressions video where we took the new Float Ride Energy 4 from Reebok out and it performed so well and it cost me £56.25. Uh, obviously, that was a road shoe and this is a crossover shoe, so completely two different shoes, but it was £100 cheaper than the new Park Claw. It's a shame that graphene seems to be a very expensive product to work with, so when you put it in the midsole foam and on the outsole, those Innovate shoes are very expensive. You know, I'd like to have seen the new Park Claw around sort of 130, 135, I think that would have been a, a better price point, but we're gonna continue to run in them and then we'll be back with our full in-depth review you on the channel very soon but remember if you are going to splash out for a new pair of the park claws you definitely want to go up in size we had an amazing time last sunday at the kvk race down here in cornwall put on by the awesome folks from freedom racing the sun came out to play and everybody had a wicked time uh, i just want to say a massive thanks to say sky who put up some incredible prizes including some sort of random spot prizes which people really appreciated i ran the race in a team event with uh, richard a good friend of mine we did a loop each so obviously we had the cameras out we filmed that race so that video should be on the channel by the weekend. It's definitely worth checking out because uh, the route looked incredible, stunning views. So definitely go and check it out when it's up there. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, you know what to do guys, smash that like button, come along and join the Run for Adventure family by subscribing to the channel. But for now guys, until next time, thanks for watching, it's really appreciated. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. Outsole and midsole foam compound, um, especially when it comes to, uh, for sending down a pair of the new pluck, pluck claw. <laughs> Yeah, the new Plark Claw. I think Plark Claw would have been a much better name.